Zechariah chapter 11. Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. We pick it up in chapter 11, verse 1. Open your doors, O Lebanon, so that fire may devour your cedars. The cedars here may refer to the leaders of many nations. It says in verse 2, Wail, O pine tree, for the cedar has fallen. The stately trees are ruined. Wail, oaks of Bashan. The dense forest has been cut down. These trees probably also refer to leaders of nations. God cut them down. Verse 3. Listen to the wail of the shepherds. Their rich pastures are destroyed. Listen to the roar of the lions. The lush thicket of the Jordan is ruined. The shepherds and the lions also likely refer to leaders of nations. 4. This is what the Lord my God says. Pastor, the flock marked for slaughter. God is telling the prophet Zechariah to take care of his people Israel. Pastor them. In other words, feed them the word of God. 5. Their buyers slaughter them and go unpunished. Those who sell them say, Praise the Lord, I am rich. Their own shepherds do not spare them. Israel's leaders sold their own people. They stirred the people to reject Jesus, and as a result, in 70 AD, they were scattered as slaves. 6. For I will no longer have pity on the people of the land, declares the Lord. I will hand everyone over to his neighbor and his king. They will oppress the land, and I will not rescue them from their hands. The they refers to the Roman Empire, which destroyed Jerusalem and the temple after the Jews rejected their Messiah King, Jesus. 7. So I pastured the flock marked for slaughter, particularly the oppressed of the flock. Then I took two staves and called one favor and the other union, and I pastored the flock. Zechariah was a foreshadowing of the Messiah, Jesus. The good shepherd will unite all Jews along with Gentiles who come to him. He is the shepherd of all who receive him as Lord and Savior. Verse 8. In one month, I got rid of the three shepherds. The flock detested me, and I grew weary of them. And it is, it is not clear who the three shepherds are. However, it is clear that the true shepherd, Jesus Christ, will eventually get rid of all unfit leaders. The days of those who lead people away from Christ while creating great followings for themselves are numbered. Well, what's still going on today? But those days are numbered. Verse 9. It says, The flock detested me, and I grew weary of them, and said, I will not be your shepherd. Let the dying die, and the perishing perish. Let those who are left eat one another's flesh. When Israel detested their Messiah, he let them go their way. But they were eventually punished. In 70 AD, while Rome was attacking their city, it got so bad that the Israelites actually ate each other. It happened. They ate one another's flesh, just as verse 9 said. What happened? Verse 10, Then I took my staff called favor and broke it, revoking the covenant I had made with all the nations. 
God had a long-standing covenant with his people Israel to protect them, but when they rejected God's Son, they broke that covenant, and as a result, God says, all bets are off. And he opened the floodgates of judgment, and consequently Rome smashed them. 11. It was revoked on that day, and so the afflicted of the flock who were watching me knew it, knew it was the word of the Lord. When the faithful few saw what Rome did to Jerusalem in 70 AD, they recognized that what Jesus had warned would happen 35 years earlier in Matthew chapter 23 did happen. And that was God's punishment for rejecting and killing his son. Jesus had said it. He had predicted it. And it came to pass. 12. I told them, if you think it best, give me my pay. But if not, keep it. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. And if that sounds familiar to you, I guess it probably should. The 30 pieces of silver was the severance pay they felt their Messiah was worth. And that is what that is what the Jews paid Judas to betray him. Verse 13. And the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter, the handsome price at which they priced me. So I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord to the potter. Amazing how accurate this prophecy was. Handsome price is God using sarcasm. Thirty pieces was the price of a slave. And you know the story. Judas gave the money back to the religious leaders that he got for betraying Jesus, and the Jews used it to buy a potter's field to be used as a cemetery. And that is exactly what this verse predicted would happen. Fourteen. Then I broke my second staff called Union, breaking the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. The broken staff symbolizes the dissolving of the covenant of the covenant uh, nation Israel. It was a covenant nation, but when that staff was broke, that represented the the uh, the breaking of that covenant nation. Basically, the nation Israel is no longer the people of God. I don't care what. The Zionists, the Christian Zionists, say they are no longer the people of God. The church, the true spiritual Israel made up of Jews and Gentiles who have repented and trust Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior are the people of God. God has broken down the partition and made of the two one. One people in Jesus. 15. Then the Lord said to me, Take again the equipment of the foolish shepherd. They rejected God's chosen shepherd and their Messiah. Consequently, God says, a selfish, greedy, and corrupt leader will arise, and he will be bad to Israel. Verse 16, For I am going to raise up a shepherd over the land who will not care for the lost, or seek the young, or heal the injured, or feed the healthy, but will eat the meat of the choice sheep, tearing off their hoofs. In other words, he's going to use and abuse Israel. They didn't want their loving Messiah, so, so this is what they're going to get instead. They cut a bad deal, didn't they? Chapter, or verse 17, Woe to the worthless shepherd who deserts the flock. May the sword strike his arm and his right eye. May his arm be completely withered, his right eye totally blinded. The worthless shepherd is the final Antichrist who will appear at the end of the age. He's going to do some horrible things to the church and to Israel, but when God says, Whoa, that means he will eventually stop him. We'll pick it up in chapter 12 next time. Until then, Mike Moret for Scripture verse by verse. So long, everyone.